Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another favorites video for you and I'm so late again with my favorites that my September favorites have had to meld into my October favorites because we're almost at the end of the month. So I'm early from October, late for September, but that's okay. Today I'm just gonna share with you the things that I've been loving. I'm so excited because Halloween is almost here. I really wanted to wear like a Halloween headband like I've done in the past, but they're downstairs in a box and my dad's asleep and there's currently a Christmas tree sitting on top of said box and I just know I'd make way too much noise trying to get it out. So instead I've got some pumpkins up there and a pumpkin just like chilling on my bed there. And I'm also really worried that I've got stuff on my teeth because it's the second time I'm filming this intro. So now the teeth check is done. Let's jump into the favorites. I'm still loving a lot of the makeup that I was loving in my last favorites video, but some foundation favorites, some new ones. I cringe because they're both high end, but I have been enjoying them. And if you have any new drugstore foundations that you think I should try, definitely let me know because the ones that I've tried recently have all been high end and I don't know what to try. Anyway, two new ones that I have been enjoying are the Marc Jacobs Remarkable, finally got my hands on this one, and also the new Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. They both have some really good qualities. I am currently in the midst of filming a review of this one, so I, I am wearing it on my face today. And I'm also enjoying the Urban Decay All Nighter. I have two shades, I've got shade two, and also a sample of shade three, which I've been using because I have actually had a bit of a tan. I find that that one is really long wearing. You don't need a lot of it. And if you sort of use it correctly, it can be really, really lovely and really long lasting. I wore this to the races the other day. It lasted all day, looked amazing. Uh, I just find that it oxidizes. So be careful with the color when you're choosing it. If you do want me to do a review on that one, let me know in the comments. And as for the Marc Jacobs, very, very pricey foundation. Hard to get your hand on the shade, but I finally got my, like, my match. I've got shade 26 Bisque Medium, which is a pretty decent match for my sort of NC 25-ish, 20-ish skin at the moment. Not the 100% perfect foundation, particularly because of the price, but it does have lovely coverage. And if you use just like a small amount of it, really spread it out, it gives you a gorgeous finish on the skin. Quite a matte finish if that's the look that you're going for, which is sometimes what I like because I do have oily skin and quite long wearing as well. So look out for the review on that if I haven't already posted it. If I have, I will pop it on the screen above me, uh, but uh, enjoying that one as well. Then just because you might not have three foundations in a favorites video, I have a throwback favorite. This is the Tarte, is it the Airbrush Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Airbrush Foundation. Now, if you've been watching me for a very long time, you'll know that this was a favorite of mine a while ago and I recently got it back out and I realized why I love it. I love this foundation. I have two shades because I've got light medium beige which is a bit dark and then light beige which is probably suits me better. It's really great coverage powder like mineral foundation gives you a gorgeous finish on the skin. I feel like it's really great if you have oily skin because it kind of melds with the natural oils in your skin to just give you this gorgeous skin like finish particularly on days when I don't have too much to cover up. I'm not having too many skin issues. I'm not having too many dry patches or too many like really bad breakouts. That foundation just, it just works for me. So really love that one from Tarte. If you haven't tried it, I know it's been out forever, but give it a shot because I think you'll enjoy it. I have another face product favorite from NYX. This is the NYX Wonder Stick Highlight and Contour. And I have the shade Light Medium, I think this is. I swear I read it, yes. Light Medium WS01. So as the name suggests, contour stick at one end, and then you have a highlight stick at the other. And what I love about this is that it's a great formula. It's easy to blend. It's not too, like it's pigmented, but it sort of blends away in a way that leaves you looking very natural. It's not too harsh. It's easy to work with, great for beginners. The actual contour shade is on the cooler side for once. It has a slightly, slightly, pink base to it almost. I don't know, I feel like it works really well with fair undertones, which is a good thing because I often find that they're too warm or they're too dark. And then the pale shade is actually quite light on me, which works well as well. Like I said, easy to blend, inexpensive, great if you want to try a bit of cream contouring and highlighting 
and just a really nice product to use either on its own or sometimes I use it and then will go in with a powder product over the top. For the brows, I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Definer and I am very fickle with brow pencils. I go back and forth as to whether I prefer the really skinny, precise pencil or the more angular pencil, which is what you'll find on this one here. It does have that long sort of thin edge. It has a point and then it goes slightly thicker at the end. But I just find this works really well. These kind of things are super quick when it comes to your brows. I have the shade medium brown, which is the same as I have in the Brow Wiz and I've been really enjoying this one. For eyes, I was recently given the Lancome Liner Mini Max, which is a liquid liner. It's a flexible tip brush applicator, really black, really beautiful, and I've been absolutely loving it. However, I don't think you need to splurge on this one because I really do think that the Maybelline Hyper Shark Wing is pretty much an exact dupe for it. And you guys know I have loved this one for a very long time. I would definitely recommend it. So the Lancome one is beautiful. If you want to splurge, why not? If not, save your money, go the Maybelline Hyper Shark Wing both are fantastic products. I've been really loving like winged liner again and liquid liner and these are definitely right up there with my favorite products to do a liquid liner. I just find them so easy to use and I really like the, the flexible brush tip. I just think that it's just for me, it's the easiest way to get a really nice wing. Still not a pro at it, but I can get them kind of even. Sorta, of, just don't look too close. Rounding off the makeup favorites with lips. I've been really loving the lip color that I'm wearing at the moment and I actually have it in from three different brands, just slightly different. So the first one is the NYX Lip Lingerie in Bedtime Flirt. I think I hauled this or talked about it in a previous video. It's a gorgeous shade. I actually have it on my lips underneath a product, but they're pretty much the exact same color. If you like your liquid lip colors that set to a matte sort of non-transferable finish, then go for the NYX Bedtime Flirt. It's a gorgeous warm pink, brown, neutral shade. Then if you're not a fan of the sort of dry matte lip, if you first prefer something to be a little bit more comfortable, check out the Revlon Ultra HD Matte Lip Color. This one's in the shade Seduction, I think. I need to get this right because I'm talking about it. Where's the name? Oh no. Oh yeah, HD Seduction. I was right. I should just trust myself, not second guess. Again, really nice, super duper similar shade. Like you can barely tell the difference. I have this one on top today, but a gorgeous shade, perfect for the springtime. And then the third one is Nude Thrill from the Maybelline New York Vivid Matte Liquid Collection. Again, a very similar shade. This one is very comparable to the Revlon. I'd say this one is slightly more pigmented and has a light, a little bit more of a moussey formula to it but again a soft matte finish doesn't quite set on the lips but gorgeous shades all the same so really liking that tone of lip color and um, some really nice offerings from the drugstore there in terms of lip products okay moving on to tanning not a topic i often talk about in favorites videos but i recently used the latan self tanning foam coconut water intensely hydrating and I fell in love. It worked so well. It was so easy to use. I was in a rush and I did it. I left it on for about an hour and a half. You can do like one hour, two hour, three hours, depending on how deep you want the color to be. I did like an hour and a half, almost two hours, and it was a great color for me. Not too dark, still sort of natural looking. It didn't smell like tan, which I was very, very thankful for. And it didn't streak on me. It was just a great tan for beginners. If you haven't tanned a lot before, or like me, you don't tan super regularly, would definitely recommend checking out this one. And then on the face, I used the J Bronze by Jennifer Hawkins Face Flawless Tan. Really love this stuff. I just used this for a couple of nights. I put it on and then after I'd cleansed my face and I just sort of left it, I didn't actually wash it off. And then I did it again a second night and it seemed to make my face pretty much the same shade as my body, but didn't look again so dark that I felt like I I'd completely changed my skin color, if that makes sense. I don't know how to describe it, but together they both did me a fantastic job in terms of giving me a tan. I really liked them. I wouldn't call this next product skincare, but it's a product that you use on your skin, so I'm shoving it in there anyway. It's blotting papers. I have some here from NYX and also some from Paul and Joe that I got from Beauty Bay like a million years ago. 
I just have really been enjoying blotting papers of late. I watched a video ages ago from Lisa Eldridge that talked about instead of powdering your skin, just blotting because powder, if you repowder over the top, it tends to get cakey. Instead, you should just sort of leave your foundation as is, maybe do a light dusting of powder and then just blot throughout the day. And I've been using some more glowy foundations and I just found that blotting just works so well. And I don't know why I haven't done it more before, but loving blotting papers of late. Definitely would recommend. These ones might be a bit hard to get your hands on here in Australia, but the next ones you can find in Priceline, really inexpensive, super just easy to chuck into your handbag and worth having, even if you just have an oily tea list an oily t-zone like me and then a skincare favorite that i have as a recommendation for one of you guys i think somebody recommended this to me in an empties video when i was talking about the glam glow um, mud mask this one is from sephora it's the sephora mud mask purifying and mattifying it is a clay mask you know recognize like a gray kind of clay there. Great for really drawing out impurities and clearing out your pores and your skin. But the best bit about this one, it was like 24 bucks. Bargain. And you get like two fluid ounces. It's massive. It's going to last me forever. and Well, not forever, but it'll last me a long time. Really great alternative if you're looking for something inexpensive to try compared to, say, one of the Glam Glow masks. I still really enjoy the Glam Glow products, but if you're on a budget, maybe check out this one from Sephora. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, and the last beauty favorite, I forgot to mention these when we're talking about makeup, but these are new sponges from Real Techniques. I was really, really lucky to go to a lunch with Sam and Nick Chapman when they're out here in Australia, and it was definitely like a pinch me YouTube moment. I never thought I'd be able to meet them and I got to and they were so beautiful and so lovely to talk to and so just amazing to see in real life. Anyway, we got given some of the new sponges that they have and I've been really enjoying them. This one here, it actually comes in a pack of two. It's like the mini eraser duo, I think it's called. Really, really nice sort of under the eyes from doing like more precision work. And then this one here, I can't even remember what it's called, but I'll put the exact names in the description box. It is fantastic. I love how it's got this like double ended so you can use like the big side or you can use like the smaller side, but it works kind of like a handle. It's really comfortable, really, really bouncy, great like texture of the sponge. I think if you if you can't afford the original Beauty Blender, these are definitely a great option. A lot of the fake like knockoffs on the market are just crap and aren't comparable, but these really, really are really bouncy, really just great quality, inexpensive, would definitely recommend them if you're a beauty sponge addict. Okay, I've been talking way too long, so let's wrap this up with a couple of lifestyle favorites. The first one I have is an app. It's called Carousel, and I've been using this to sell a bunch of my stuff. Uh, it's, it's kind of like using eBay or something like that, but it's a little bit less restrictive. You do have to be a little bit more careful on it. You have to be responsible and make sure that you get the money before you send the products out and that you're being honest and sort of being a little bit careful because you can do meetups and stuff. So you meet up and hand over products rather than selling. It's a little bit less, like I said, there's less, less restrictions on it than eBay. So it's a little bit easier to use, but at the same time, you do have to be aware of your safety and what you're doing and, and stuff like that. But I've just been really enjoying selling old stuff and rehoming it to other people. I've done beauty stuff. I've done fragrances. I've done homewares. I've done textbooks. Just if you're trying to get rid of some of your stuff and you feel like it could be rehomed, check out Carousel. I feel like it's just an Australian kind of app. Um, I don't know whether it's used so much overseas, but uh, for my Aussie friends out there, if you've got a lot, lot of stuff to sell, maybe check it out and see if you enjoy it. I have a few music favorites as always. Uh, the first one at the top of my list is All You Need by Danley. Danley, not sure how you say it, featuring Tara Louise. This song I randomly heard thanks to a video on YouTube which was saying that it was a new Taylor Swift song and it obviously wasn't but then I found like the real song and I just I, I fell in love with it. Definitely check it out. I've also been loving The Greatest by Sia, uh, Say You Won't Let Go by James Arthur, My Way by Calvin Harris. Love that song. Just the vibe of it is awesome even if it is about Taylor Swift and I love her but I love that song. Uh, Anywhere by Passenger. I'm still really loving Starving uh, by Hayley Steinfeld. I know I mentioned that last month but I feel like I didn't point out has 
like it got chucked in at the end even though I really really liked it so um, would recommend that one as well and I'll pop a few others just listed some secret ones in the description box below if you want some music recommendations I love getting music recommendations that's why I always include them in these videos and I'm just checking if I have some book favorites for my reading lovers who keep on asking me to do book chats I will, I will get back to them at some point, but uh, Stripped Down and Stripped Bare by Emma Hart. Books about strippers. I'm going to leave it at that, but good nonetheless, even though they're about strippers. Anyway, Fire and Brimstone by R.L. Matheson. A Beautiful Funeral by Jamie Maguire. I had tears, it was kind of rounding off that whole beautiful kind of series that she had there. Really enjoyed that one. There's probably more, but oh, Jill Shalvis, The Trouble with Mistletoe. First kind of Christmas book of the season, even though we're only in October, but I enjoyed that one. And The Anti Step Brother by Tijan, really liked that one as well. So you've got your book recommendations, you've got your music recommendations, you've got a ridiculous amount of beauty stuff to check out. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please let me know what your favorites are for the past month, two months, since I'm a little bit late. Uh, so maybe I can check them out. I love hearing recommendations from you guys. And as you can see, I often take them into account and it, it just, it encourages my spending. It's really bad. But anyway, I hope you have a awesome Halloween if you celebrate Halloween. If you do or you dress up, can you send me some pictures on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram? Because I would love, love, love to see. And other than that, I'm going to go. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. My name is Rachel and I'll talk to you all next time. Bye.